So that tells you a lot about whether or not your board is working and that you've made it through this process. Uh, there's one other thing, too, with regards to how does firmware work. So let's say, is my board working? I want to know if my board's working, but maybe firmware and other things have a problem. And it'll start to come together for you in a minute. So I'm backing up and I'm saying, all right, I did not read data. I did not get smart. Is my PCB board working? Is the printed circuit board on the bottom working? So if the board is working correctly, it will try to send the head to the system area to read the content. Now, unfortunately, except for Western Digital's, you'll have to open the drive to actually see this. This is what it will look like. Now, this movie is going to do it twice. You'll see this process twice. But understand, i got a drive that does not return data to me, and I want to see if the board is working by sending the head, without expensive equipment, by sending the head to the correct location to read the system area, and then, it will, then I'll know that it failed at that point, that maybe I've actually got something else going on, like click, 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 or something. All right, so here's this video. It'll do it twice. The head will move to this location, and it will jiggle back and forth intentionally. Now, you'll see it in a second. It'll park again, and it'll do it again. But the head will actually go to this seek area, and it'll jiggle just the ever slight so much. And you'll actually see it, like read the data. Did you guys see that? So that actually read the system area and then responded to me before it actually went to its park location. So I know where that system area is on that drive. Now, if you open up a drive and you see something that looks like this, well, it probably kept sending the head to that location, but there is some damage, and then it scratched the platter. So it never was able to read the system area. That's probably the system area, and that system area is gone. So it's very, very important to at least see it go to this location and intentionally jiggle. If it doesn't work, what will happen is you'll get click, 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 and it'll never actually look like it went to the right location to read any data. But the very first time that it's powered on and it goes through that initialization process, it's got to go try to read that system area. So when you're dealing with things like that, which are head problems where you actually have a head crash, there is a difference in how the head actually responds. So here's an instance right here where, okay, so you've got a a head that clunks, and you have a head that clicks. And I'm serious when I say this. Like, you guys have probably heard click, click, click. And you've heard clunk, 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 right? That is probably a bad head. The clicking noise it may not be a bad head. So here's an example of what that sounds like. This is an older drive. Now, that's a severe one. You probably haven't heard one that severe, maybe. but. So ultimately what ends up happening is something around three minutes, maybe three and a half minutes, if the other heads are okay, it's kind of bad to let it run like that for three and a half minutes, but I'm just telling you, you got no equipment, okay? So somewhere around three, three and a half minutes, if the other heads are okay and they respond, they may read the system area and then still return the data to you. You may still get a serial number or a model number if you were letting it run until it actually settled down and you will actually be able to read content. That means that you probably only have one bad head. That means you may still be able to read the other data. And you'll understand why I'm saying this in a minute. But uh, you know, there's, there's this idea that, oh, my data is written consecutively through all my platters and divided up bit by bit through the platters. Well, that's not true. Every head writes data, and then it has to be turned off at some point, and the next head has to be initialized, and then data has to be written there, and so on and so on down through the head stack. So data is not written all in in the cylinders across all the platters. It's actually divided up into what's called zone tables. So this is what it looks like, though, if you actually have a bad head. You might be missing one altogether. So that clunking noise came from this drive. Now, all the other heads were fine, but this one. So now, if I'm going to try to read the data from the drive, yes, I might need to replace that head to read that platter. And I did, and it worked. I was able to do all but like you know 4% of the drive. But I can still read the rest of the data. So before I replace a head, I want to image the rest of the data I have. And I can turn off this, this bad head with some equipment. You may still be able to read it even without that. But this is why I can still read the data from it. This is called a zone table. So on the drive, in the system area, they said, what is the fastest part of my drive on my platters? And so from 0 to, in this case, 4,300,000 or something. Uh, 4,326,000 blah 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 LBAs are all on one side of one platter. So I got basically like a chunk of two mega data before it moved to another location on the on another platter. So if I could read, say, you know, 75% of the disk, I may still have Word documents or pictures or something else that I can still interpret. Then I can go and fix the one bad head and then fill in the hole for the one that I read. 
if that makes sense. So what it looks like is this. So if I was to sequentially read a drive that had four heads and one of them is bad, then in this case, you'll actually see green, green, green. I was able to read all these sectors. Then I got a chunk where it's bad. It didn't read any of this, and then it continued on. Well, I might be able to read all that data, interpret it. So for instance, in this particular drive, I know you guys can't read that number there, but that first place where it actually starts off and it's bad is uh, 409600 is the, is the location. Now, the MFT is normally stored in a smaller beginning area of the drive. So if you have the MFT, you might be able to determine what the files were and where you can go get stuff. So if the MFT is in the green, you may actually be able to tell where your files are and skip some of the locations of, of where this bad head is. If you have a Mac, well, the, the table actually starts right in here, 409, 640, 42. So, uh, so in this case, the actual table, which would have been the catalog, is destroyed. So I actually will need this head in order to get files back other than carving them. Otherwise, I'll have a problem. But you can know a lot from just looking at that type of information. So if I have to replace the, uh, the head, I could actually go through the process of reading this. Then I, this is actually where I actually start physically like disassembling, reassembling drives. Um, I use a foil head tool. Now, some people know these things to be like head combs. There's a tool that's called a head comb. You can slide in between heads and you can remove them. Um, I use something similar to a Sudafed container, and I can make them out of this for like 50 cents. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's really rough, too, when you go to the store and you go, look, I need 50 boxes of Sudafed. Uh, uh, <laughs> when you're teaching class and you want to, you know, oh, I got seven FBI agents in my class and I need a... Anyway, maybe somebody can make a phone call and get you some Sudafed. Anyway. <laughs> so ultimately, that's where we're dealing with, okay, I've been able to read the other 75%. Now if I replace this, I might be able to read this 25% and put that back into that location. Now, those are a little bit more advanced methods, but it is possible to be able to tell that I have a bad head, still read data, and return something, and then fix it myself. Now, there is one other problem that's very simple for you to fix, which is, uh, anybody heard Star Trek sounds on their drive? Anybody hear phasers? You probably heard it, but you don't know you heard it. Okay. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Nobody's heard that? Yeah? So normally what this would mean is, is that I've got a head stuck to the platter or I've got a spindle that doesn't turn so the head cannot read anything so they'll make noises like this. So here's another one that you might have heard that's very similar. Anybody heard that? Yeah. So normally that means I've got a spindle that's not turning, my head is stuck. And in some instances, like for instance, there's some laptop drives that are like 80 gigs that the head is stuck to the platter. All you literally have to do is open the, dr the drive itself and turn it with a screwdriver without touching the platters or scratching the platters. Turn the platter till it breaks the torque. It's called stiction, basically. We used to have this problem back in the early days when uh, RLLs, MFMs, and stuff like that would actually stick. And, and what was the fix for it? Anybody remember the fix for stiction? Screwdriver. Yeah. Yeah, screwdriver, right? It was like, it was. Right. <laughs> And Secretary of Mine, oh, my machine doesn't start up. Start it now. All right, awesome. Or you take it out and you spin it on the table in the opposite direction. That would do it too. But in this case now, they're actually really stuck. Um, now, the exception to this is, is that some of the newer Seagate and Western Digital hard drives that are now like in little mini towers and they're standing up on their end and, you know, you jiggle the table and they go, poof, right? Now what happens actually is that the, the platters are so heavy, in a lot of cases, the spindle will break free and the spindle inside the drive will not turn anymore at all. So if you open up the drive and you're not able to turn it at all and the platters don't spin at all, then your motor is seized and that's a more advanced replacement at that point in time. But if it does turn at all and you can break the head free, you will probably be able to read your data and do okay. So there's one other really simple problem. Anybody plugged in like one of the, like you get a Seagate 640 and you plug it in and all of a sudden, you know, it just doesn't power up at all. You hear nothing. No spindle, no nothing, head, no head movement. It just sounds completely dead. You guys had this one? So there's a lot of these that are actually just like this, like no power at all. You don't hear it spin up and you're just like, it's dead. I don't